Once again, good morning. Welcome back to Let's Really Ghost Thief 2. I've had to do a lot of experimenting with this one, as you can see, because there are quite a few, well, quite a few, there are, I would say, four big trouble spots. But I'm finally ready to record a ghost of Life of the Party. So let's get started. Here's the ending of Trail of Blood. I separately uploaded the cutscene and the briefing for the party to the playlist, so we don't have to worry about that. Here are our objectives. The mechanists are out to kill you. Get to Angel Watch via the rooftops to avoid unwanted attention. Infiltrate Angel Watch. The access hatch on the eastern side should provide undetected entry. Spy on Karis to learn why he's throwing the party. Break into Karis' office and find some information on the Cetus Project. Find and read Karis' latest entry into the new scripture of the Master Builder. You claim you're the best, now prove it. Take to the Thieves' Highway and grab 1550 worth of loot. A true professional doesn't leave a mess, don't kill anyone. When your objectives have been completed, get out of Angel Watch and back to the safety of the Bell Tower. Let me start by saying I think this is by far the best mission in the first two games. And in terms of level design, it may be the best mission in any of the three games, period. I do enjoy the Cradle in Thief 3 just a little bit more, but that's because I like scary missions and that mission's really scary. This one might be the best built of all time, but I don't know. Let's get moving. Here at the equipment screen, there's no need to purchase anything, but I will say right off the bat that the mission's impossible to Supreme Ghost for a few reasons. There are places where you have to do some nudging, there's a place where you have to take a first alert, and there are places where you... There, well, there's at least one place where you either have to use a potion, which I'll end up doing, because the other option is to wait for nine hours and, during the wait, use some stacked objects to redirect the path of the AI's fidgeting, either of which are supreme busts. In the interest of avoiding a nine-hour wait, I'll just use an invisibility potion and I'll take the chemical success. And finally, it's possible to perfect thief the mission, but you have to use another invisibility potion. I'll point that out when we get there. All things told, it's a very difficult but very fun mission. The first thing you might notice, probably the reason... Hey, the city looks almost bearable from up here. Probably the reason that we're up on the rooftops is because we're doing a daytime robbery. So to start things off, just head down here to the left, always making sure to slide silently. Go over to the window, open the shutters. Hey, we've got a secret already. How do you like that? If I can just convince Garrett to crawl through, I'll be in good shape. There we go. There are three water arrows on the table in here. I'm only interested in the two sets of coins, which are worth 20 each and bring my total to 40. So I'll close the window behind me, mantle back up here, head over to the other side, do another silent drop. It's a little bit harder to do over here, but it's eminently possible, as usual, if you can just get that nice little edge. So then as you walk in here, the guard's got a purse, if I remember right, worth 10. Brings our total to 50. That's also our first of 24 pickpockets. And his chest has some copper coins in it to bring our total to 55. <laughs> Not too bad so far, is it? The whole city section is just. This road north, it should take me right to the mechanist tower. The whole mission's just a lot of fun, really. Yeah, you know, it doesn't really get rough at all until you get to the mechanist tower. First thing you might notice, if you look over behind that window, there's a keeper watching us from inside some sort of library. There's no way to get to him. Now, if you climb down the ladder here, you'll have to jump off on the stone, and the archer behind that window will almost certainly hear you. 
The trick is to do a silent slide off this edge and aim for the slope on the generator below. <laughs> aim just a little bit higher than I did. <clears throat> and you should be able to make the landing silently with no damage. Quit tapping with me, guys. It's tough to line it up exactly right, but it's doable. There you go. No problem. So from there, you can drop down to the stone. Now for this, you just kind of have to get lucky. Mantle up, get his arrows. That's our second of 24 pickpockets. And get over to this table, which is very nicely shadowed. Without ever leaving the shadows of the table, you can just sort of creep over to the edge, and then lean forward and get the coins out of that chest, which bring our total to 120. Now if we just wait for him to turn around again, we can slip out the window behind him do a silent slide down. Used to be birds singing in the morning and wake you up. Singing at night looking for girl birds to meet up with. Just don't hear them no more. Kind of sad. Alright. Once he turns slide off the table slide out slide out behind him and we're set Wait until you hear this guard. He'll patrol all the way to the end of this room and turn around. So when he does that, we'll just follow him. Uh, okay, he's heading backwards now. Now we'll nab this vase. Up there is one passage into the sort of astronomer's room, but it requires us to break boards. We're not about to do that. Next we'll tackle the infamous archer fight. We can take advantage of their conversation to pick all four of their arrows pretty easily. It will require some quick saving and quick loading to keep the conversation going, you know, by restarting it, so that probably counts as an engine exploit, so it's a supreme bust. But we can certainly do it without alerting any of the archers, which is good. So start off with, uh, Master Willie's boys. Because they see you... Well, I just like to start off with them. So move over here. Stench heartier than your rotting burrick of a master is the liquor on his fetid breath. If he comes near Lady Van Vernon again, we'll boil his knickers. Oh, mighty fine words coming from a knock kneed, inbred page boy such as yourself. Our good master Willie wouldn't be caught near that frumpy little trollop unless he were holding her back at the end of a halberd. How dare you defile the name of someone so good and virtuous as the Lady Van Vernon? <laughs> and I'm telling you that the old stench heartier than your rolling. That's exactly what I don't want to do. And I'm telling you that the only stench heartier than your rotting burrick of a master is the liquor on his fetid breath. 
If he comes near Lady Van Vernon again, we'll boil his nerves. <laughs> oh, ho! Mighty fine words coming from a knock-kneed, inbred page boy such as yourself. Our good Master Willie wouldn't be caught near that frumpy little trollop unless he were holding her back at the end of a halberd. How dare you defile the name of someone so good and virtuous as go. Lady Van Vernon. Our lady is a saint among mortal women. An angel so pure the heavens couldn't hold her. <laughs> ah, your lady, an angel? You're lucky that Darkside Whore Keeps aren't bashing down her door for stealing their clientele. I'd like to make that drop silently too, and if I'm I could. You that the only stench hardier than your rotting burrick of a master is the liquor on his fetid breath. If he comes near Lady Van Vernon again, we'll boil his knickers. Oh, mighty fine words coming from a knock kneed inbred page boy such as yourself. Our good Master Willie wouldn't be caught near that frumpy little trollop unless he were holding her back at the end of a halberd. How dare you defile the name of someone so good and virtuous as the Lady Van Vernon? Our lady is a saint among mortal women. An angel so pure the heavens couldn't hold her. <laughs> ah, your lady, an angel? You're lucky that Darkside Whore Keeps aren't bashing down her door for stealing their clientele. Why, just last night, I saw her out back warming up the stable boy. Such slander will not be tolerated while we're on watch. You'd best run and rescue your helpless limp lord before he founders in his own vomit or wakes up naked in a hen coop. Scurry off or he'll acquire some unnecessary ventilation. Is that a threat? You shriveled old maid! You go to prick us with your sewing needles! On this side of the street, we shoot like soldiers! So don't make promises your arrows can't keep! You gone! You gone too far this time, you camel man of tunic wedding mollycoddle! An arrow in the throat that'll shut you up! Uh, have at thee! So we got all four of their pickpockets, we got that purse from the table in here, brought our total to 320, we avoided any alerts, and then they had a scripted fight. Now whoever survived is in hunt mode, but that's not a bust because it wasn't triggered by us. They're only in hunt mode because they just got in a fight. So that's one of the better uh, flavor portions of these games. I love the, uh, the insults they throw at each other. I'm Reminded of Monty Python and the Holy Grail, actually, in the taunting scene. Anyway. I was about to skip a bit of loot, which would be a senseless thing to do. So those were pickpockets 3 through 6 out of 24. So we have 18 to go. Let's just see who won, I'm curious. One of Master Willie's boys. They usually do. I think the the higher ground confers an advantage. But uh, just one interesting thing to note: um, Master Willie's boys may be more correct in their assessment of their respective employers. If you remember the dossier in Framed in the secure records room, it mentioned uh, Lady Van Vernon's frequent adultery as leverage to be deployed against her. So, just get to this far one, retrieve your vine arrow, which may not seem like an upgraded rope arrow, but it is because in addition to all the surfaces a rope arrow can stick in, your vine arrow is also capable of sticking in metal grates. That doesn't really come in handy in this mission, but it will certainly come in handy later. So I haven't looked at our map yet, which is probably something we should do. So the theoretical route is this red line through all the places you can go. We started here at the bell tower. We just 
passed between Castle Van Vernon and Master Willie's Manor. We're here at Fieldstone Estate. Below us is Grand Modern Road. To the north are some apartments, the Necromancer's Spire and the Sheminov Estate. I'll highlight those as we hit them, of course. Right now we're at Fieldstone Estate. <coughs> Further north on Grand Modern Road, we encounter Sir Cullen's Keep. We cross over the Baron's Way. We go through the Dayport Trader's Bank. We'll pass through Lady Louise's Suite. I will probably skip Castle Carlisle and the Greenhouse because there's no loot over there. There's just some equipment I won't need. And then we see this way to Angel Watch. Back here to Lady Louisa's, here at the end of Grand Modern Road, we actually reach Angel Watch, and then our map of Angel Watch, such as it is, just shows a main concourse on the first floor, with a mechanical lift in the southeast corner. The second, third, fourth, and fifth floors can all be accessed either by the lift or by a stairway in the northwest of the tower. Karis's office is on the fifth floor, and the ballroom is on the sixth floor. Two more pickpockets to get here at the Fieldstone Estate. We want to nab this guy's arrows. That'll be our seventh. And then I prefer to follow him just because he moves faster than the swordsman, so he's harder to avoid. But I think we're still well shadowed here. <coughs> so anyway, it's, um... What I did back there with the archers is not inarguably a supreme bust. There's a case to be made that it's not, but I don't particularly care. So, once you get that key, that's your 8th of 24. You want to open this. Lock it behind us. Grab that vase. What's there? Now, you have to time everything inside here carefully. Just because you don't want that guy to hear the door opening and closing, but you also have to move pretty fast because his turnaround time is not long at all. So, the door closes, lock it. Once I hear the other door close, what's there? Intruder! Once you hear the other door close, you want to open it and fly to the opposite corner as fast as you can. Like so. Now I'm going to have to wait just a little bit because I need to close that door behind me in order to give me space to open and shut this one without him hearing me, so... When he closes that door again, I'm going to rush across the room and shut that one. What's there? Too slow. Amazingly enough. Wish someone would let me know what's going on. Who's there? Too fast that time. Dun, if we dun, stay crouched. Dun, dun, dun. No, he's seeing me. That's the problem. Okay. <clears throat> There we go. Good. So then when he shuts that door behind him, I want to move into the third room and get the loot. Just three silver coins. <laughs> to bring our total, along with the vase, bring our total up to 481. When he leaves again, I'll shut that door. get through and shut it unscathed. <coughs> wonder, even though it's not shadowed, I may be able to save a little extra time if I go hide in that other corner.
I hear no first alerts, so this key is useless now, so we'll drop it on his patrol route. And next, again, I prefer to follow the archer, but that really is just a preference. If you hide on these inner walls, you're plenty well shadowed. Let's head to the east, tackle this spot next. You just have one thief who definitely can see through that middle window, so we need to be careful of that. But for now, let's just uh, hit the edge and mantle up. That's the way to keep it quiet. If you land like I just did, he'll almost certainly hear you. Maybe if I crouch, that'll slow me down enough. Slow me down too much. Maybe if I go forward, but do it at a diagonal, that'll do it. Maybe I should just land on the pipe. Listen carefully for the sound of first alerts from his direction. See, he first alerted just then. I wonder if I could avoid it by <gasps> taking a more direct route from Fieldstone. Let's try that. I just mantle. Or hell, just land. Seems like it's actually not that tough to avoid the alert. Alright, good. Now we do want to head down into the rat hole, but we gotta be careful to be quiet. The thief will hear us if we land. All I'm interested in down here is this ring in the corner. Brings my total to 506. Now I want to get out of here, so do a half draw just to keep it quiet. Mantle back onto this rafter. Retrieve the arrow. As long as you're quiet, there's no trouble here. Let's head through this broken window. There's his stash is back here. He's got a purse, three pairs of coins, and three stacks of coins, which combined bring my total to 596. Getting out of here <clears throat> sort of presents its own problems, but I think the best thing to do is stay crouched and use this wall as cover. So just quietly slip past the metal and I think we're just low enough to avoid any comments from him. Which is good, it's what we want. Oh, damn it. Well, he did a... Something's going down. He first alerted without the kindness of a comment. He's about to second alert. I'm not going to worry that much since Supreme was impossible anyway, but... But that is a shame. I hate a I hate taking a bust that results from not hearing a first alert until after the fact. Oh well. Make sure you get your vine arrow back. Ugh, excuse me. I didn't think anybody from Fieldstone could see me this far back. Well, 
he's gone, we'll head this way. Ideally, we can do that quietly. <gasps> right, this is a safe sp Well, no, not yet. This is a safe spot, so I'm gonna do a real save. I realized it's been a while since I did one of those. And Let me just think about where I'd like to go next. That archer is gone. I'm gonna head back this way. Here's another good conversation. Oh, but it's just not fair. The season's most ballyhooed social event, and we're not even invited? I am a Rothschild. Don't they understand that? Don't they understand how incredibly important I am? Shh, shh. I know, I know, dear. But there will be other banquets. Besides, it's not as if we intend to join their silly religion or anything. No, it's not that. It's just that... that, well... Yes, my snookums? Oh, Pumpkin! The Mechanist invited the Bumblesins! The Bumblesins! I mean, they haven't been in the Inner Circle in years! Now, Frederick, don't you think you're overreacting just a tad? <laughs> no, 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 no! I am Frederick Juniper Rothschild III, and I deserve more recognition than those commoners. Oh, I know what we'll do, my sweet. We'll throw our own ball to the abyss with those mechanists and their private affairs. Besides, they're just looking for supporters. We'll have our own banquet and invite everyone but the Bumblesons. Would that make you happy, my love? Oh, yes! What an absolutely capital idea! So, steal their purse through the window. Brings the total to 696. Do a quiet vine arrow. Now be careful, we have to navigate over this catwalk, which is tough to do. What was that? Without making big noise. <coughs> What's that? Oh goodness. I thought I had it there, I really did. That's better. <gasps> Who made that noise? Oh, if we move too fast there, he'll still first alert. Good to know. <coughs> So, we did all this so we could approach the Sheminov estate from the other side, since we couldn't break those boards back near the very beginning of the mission. That archer does eventually turn around his instance, but it, it takes a long time. He, for obvious reasons, prefers to face out of the tower he's guarding. On top of that, we have the patroller. So if we want to avoid first alerts, we just need these guys to cooperate in their timing. <laughs> well, I do wonder... Hello? Okay, yeah. Just gonna have to wait. I do, however, want to avoid the ladder. I wonder if maybe if I go to the other side, I could at least drop down to the tower. I 
really didn't like making that noise, but apart from that, that turned out pretty well. I think my, my current pick count is eight, right? Yeah, I haven't... I haven't done any pickpocketing since Fieldstone. Hello? I don't like the looks of that. I am fairly certain that I can get down there with no first alert. There? But I could be wrong. It's actually probably better to be stationed here. Because I can use the wall to cover me from the archer and just follow the swordsman. So let's do that instead. I want to get the archer's arrows, and there's also some loot in his tower. So using this wall as cover. <clears throat> can avoid comments from the archer, at least up to here. Is that you? Huh. That he'll see me once I try to leave. Not again. And if I move too fast, because the swordsman's patrol is so loopy, he can see me too. Oh. <clears throat> when I know for a fact a mission can't be supremed, I just get a lot less committed to avoiding first alerts. It's probably not good, but... Something moved there. Okay, I can stand up in the corner. Something move there. And the archer can't see me. That's, Something move there. That's interesting. Is someone there? Oh, damn it, Garrett, really? Mm, not again. Nothing, I guess. Oh. So. What's that I see? Because Garrett doesn't hold his crouch. <sighs> Nothing. When you reload, but in instead he, uh. Something move. Something there. You might notice okay. if I crouch you and quick save, forever. if I quick load, you see Garrett crouching instead of, you know, being crouched the whole time. So we got busted there. Because Garrett can't hold a crouch after I save. Well, we're gonna have to listen to the Rothschilds again. I hope you don't mind. They are funny, I think. So I don't mind too much. Of course, we don't have to wait till they're done this time. We can just keep moving. Oh, but it's just not fair. The season's most ballyhooed social event, and we're not even invited? I am a Rothschild. Don't they understand that? Oh, but it's just not fair. The season's most ballyhooed social event, and we're not even invited? I am a Rothschild. Don't they understand that? Don't they understand how incredibly important I am? Shh, shh. I know, I know, dear. But there will be other banquets. Besides, it's not as if we intend to join their silly religion or anything. No, it's not that. It's just that, that, well... Yes, my snooker? Pumpkin, the mechanist invited the Bumblesons. Bumblesons. <laughs> Wonder what. The Dang it. Oh, but it's just not fair. The season's most valuable social event, and we're not even invited. Imagine if things now. Oh, but it's just not fair. The season's most valuable social event, and we're not even invited. I. I need to be willing to take this stepwise. Oh, but it's just That's not obvious. fair. The season's most ballyhooed social event, and we're not even invited? I am a Rothschild. Don't they understand that? Don't they understand how incredibly important I am? 
And now I've gotten here without first alerts again, so I'm gonna do a real save. Someone there? <sighs> Hello? Anyone there? Well, I just can't bring myself to care about that first alert. So once you get inside the tower, the s coins inside the chest will bring your total to 756. Get the guy nap around here. Need to let him get up and out of sight. And let's fly up the stairs. Hope he's faced the right way for us to get his arrows. He is. That's nine out of twenty-four. I took a first alert there. I just ultimately didn't qu really see a way down without doing it. Although I'm sure there is one. I hate his little loops. <clears throat> He's so bloody unpredictable. We got problems here! You see what I mean? I can't figure out how to stay on track. So ultimately, you want to get through these shutters. Not because of anything we're actually going to pick up, but rather simply because this is our way into the astronomer's room that doesn't involve breaking open those boards. So you see this funky box with five apples inside, with three apples and two pieces of cheese rather. Let's read his journal. Stargazer's journal, 67th evening of observation. I can stand it no longer, since my first examinations of that distant globe, that glorious blue jewel, I knew my time here in the city was at an end, for how could I possibly remain content in this quagmire of filth, corruption, and religious fanaticism, when there exists a whole new world just within reach, ripe for exploration? The means of my departure is almost within my grasp, despite a recent setback. Relic was a fine young servant and a dedicated laboratory assistant. Oh, the anguish as I removed his entrails from the plaza's great statue. And worst of all, I realize it was my miscalculations that cost the lad his life. How could I have been so stupid? The scientific principle is sound, I am sure. Using my patented sunburst device, an explosive of the highest magnitude, a thick wooden box can travel the distance needed to reach the stars. How foolish of me to forget the protective layer of lead! But the past is exactly that, and it's time to move on. I have hired a new assistant, a drunken old crone named Hildy, who will make the test flight. The sunburst device will simply be placed under the box and ignited from a distance, and Hildy will soar to that beautiful new world. Once there, she is to communicate with me via smoke signal when it is safe for me to proceed. She is, of course, a bit nervous about the proceedings, but a pint of aged gin.